Welcome to Waterstone's weekly legal update. I've got on my left William Van Roosmelen, who is an in-house counsel here at Waterstone, and I have William Robinson, who is an insolvency officer here at Waterstone. We're going to talk today about current accounts, uh, director and shareholder current accounts, the pitfalls, uh, what we experience in terms of uh, collecting and quantifying these, and what the legal options are for a liquidator, and also how as directors and shareholders, you can uh, protect yourself potentially from callbacks. So, William, just have a quick breakdown from you, you know, from your experience, how do we quantify the current account? Um, what does it mean and how, how do we get to that number? So the first process we um, do when quantifying a current account is that we ask all the banks when the company goes into liquidation for a copy of their bank statement for the last 24 months of trading. And then from there, we do our own forensic accounting analysis of the bank statements to determine all the transactions in the bank statements and what they are used for, whether they were business expenses or personal expenses. And so we look at account, um, transactions like wages, and we, knew, we know that they're business expenses. And then we look at transactions like restaurant meals and Uber Eats and whatnot, and then we, we make a discretionary call on whether they are for the good of the business or for the personal benefit of mm. the director. And what, what about things like cash withdrawals, if there's big amounts of cash, how, how, do, we, how do we deal with that? So we look at cash withdrawals, we, we add them all up and then we, um, we add up all the transactions that we deem a personal expense such as cash withdrawals into the director's bank account and also any other personal expenditure and then we get a figure and we compare that against the financial analysis of the company done by the chartered accountant and then we have a look and we compare those two figures and if our figure of their personal expenditure is larger than the um, chartered accountant's number we deem that as a debt owed to the company by the director which is a current account. All right and so so we add these transactions up we, we get a final figure and how, how do you go about verifying do we do we have to write to the director to request they pay it back? What are the kind of next steps that, that, that we take from there? So then, then we write, we quantify our figure and we outline it. And we outline all the different transactions that make up that figure and make it as clear as possible to the director mm -hmm. to show him or her where they have breached the company's acts by taking a current account out and ask them to repay it. Mm, okay. So we, we ask them to repay it, and we, we also ask them for uh, sort of explanations about the transactions as well? Yes, we also give them the opportunity to, if there's any transactions which they believe were for the benefit of the running the business, as opposed to personal expenditure, we give them the clear opportunity to write to us and explain why they think that transaction for business ex was for a business expense, and, um, and then we discuss from there and determine whether it was a business expense or it was a personal expense. All right, cool. And Mr. Van Roosmelen, in terms of the legal mechanics, are there ways in which directors and shareholders can protect themselves from a liquidator requiring this money to be paid back? Because it seems to me that a lot of small medium businesses almost use the company as their personal fund. So they'll they'll use it for personal expenses. You know, on you know on every day they'll have you know, food and petrol and all kinds of different things that, that they um, that they need to spend money on. Is there, is there a way in which that they can, you know, potentially protect themselves from having these payments call into question? Yeah, so in New Zealand, um, this scenario is quite common and it's dealt with by the Companies Act, uh, which says that the board of the company can authorise payments made to directors uh, and it can authorise things like loans that are made to directors as well. Um, there are some certain legal requirements that have to be met. Um, the directors who are determining whether or not uh, the payments or loans are authorised have to sign a certificate saying they believe it's fair to the company um, and if they don't then there's personal liability uh, against the directors personally. So mm -hmm. I suppose 
from a director's point of view, the most important takeaway is that uh, the payments really need to be authorised by the board um, and when the board authorises those payments, those also have to be um, reasonable and mm -hmm. they have to take into account the interests uh, of the company. There's also the provision of making loans to directors uh, and we see that quite often. I think we uh, at Waterstone are working on uh, a couple of claims currently where um, expenses have been incurred by a company director where we believe they are uh, payable back to the company. Because they're, because they're personal essentially, they're, they're personal costs and expenses? In our opinion, that's uh, that's the case, and it's not. It doesn't uh, seem to us that they've been authorised by the board, for example, right. which we would require. So, so in terms of these authorisations, Mr. Robinson, what do we often see that these payments have been authorised by the board, by you know way of resolutions and certificates? How how often do we actually come across those documents when we're conducting our investigations? Well, not very frequently. We do request from the chartered accountants and from the directors whether they can prove that, that, that the remuneration has been authorised, mm. but it is very um, infrequent in which they do actually provide evidence right. of the authorisation. So is it safe to say that it's from, out from, from where we see it, it's quite uncommon that, that directors and the board actually authorises this you know, for, for small, medium companies anyway? Yes, that's the mm. first statement. I suppose uh, Adam and I were speaking earlier on as well that in New Zealand it's it's quite a common thing and um, people might actually not know that mm. these provisions apply to them. Um, and so there's, there's a need there to get good advice, good accounting and legal advice absolutely. when you're when you're operating a business of your own. If Definitely. you don't have the expertise that you need to essentially you know take advice and act on that and make sure you're filling out these requirements because if you don't. A liquidator, if you get into trouble, might potentially come in and, like we do, work out um, are these personal and you know are, are they needed to be repaid? And that could be that could, that could be quite a shock for, and, and, for and some I, directors. And I think in in New Zealand, uh, in particular, a lot of small business owners. I'm not sure about other countries, but mm. they will try to mitigate overhead expenses and so they will try and take on the accounting and legal aspects of the company themselves mm. um, and as we see frequently from uh, current account claims that we pursue on a regular basis that that's not always the case and then uh, you're acting really as the ambulance at the mm. bottom of the cliff rather, rather a, than... A little bit of you know time and cost you know, during that process can potentially save a lot of effort and cost later down the track. I guess you know you're you know needing to to prioritise that um, in terms of you know whilst you're on actually running the business, you know what advice do you need and who's best to give that. Now, Mr. Van Roosmalen, if you could just kind of explain a little bit to myself and William what the next steps are. So we've written to the director, we've requested either documents or substantiation of that current account that we we say is mm. personal um, to them. What are the next steps if they if we don't receive payment of that of that amount? What do we do? Um, from our perspective uh, at Waterstone, we operate our own in-house model, so in that we're relatively fortunate uh, in that we can pursue mm. our own claims, and that will usually take the form of um, sending a demand letter to mm -hmm. the directors, and then if that's not complied with, we will um, invariably issue civil proceedings either in the district court or the high court for right. the balance of the outstanding debt which we've calculated with our in-house insolvency team. Uh, we've got a number of the claims, these types of claims, running currently uh, and it's effectively treated as debt, is it mm. not, uh, that we believe is repayable to the company. and. I think it's a debt repayable on demand. Yes. So it's it's fine to have a shareholder or a director overdrawn current account, but it's really when it becomes demanded back from you that that, that, that you run into trouble. So so if we if we demand it back and there's non compliance, we can issue proceedings in the district or high court and usually we then have to serve that on the director personally, um, from 
from what we've been doing recently. So it, it's it, actually, a, it's, it's quite a serious process, isn't it? Mm. And I suppose uh, from our perspective, this only normally happens when the company um, runs into trouble and then mm. a liquidator is appointed and yes. uh, then we have the legal entitlement to uh, pursue the claims against mm. the directors. Well, the, the current account is essentially an asset of the business. So it's yes. an asset of the business because it's an accounts receivable from the director or shareholder back into the company. So mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where we, as a liquidator, we can take you know, custody and control of that asset and require it to be repaid. Um, if, so say um, a director or shareholder is served with a proceeding and they don't respond, well, what, what are the next steps there? I mean, what, what can be done in terms of you know, the continuation of that, of that proceeding if they don't actually you know, engage and they just ignore it? What, what, what can happen next? There are a few options down the line, but uh, in terms of first steps, we would uh, apply to the court for judgment by default, which effectively means that the proceedings are undefended and mm. they can be effectively rubber stamped by the court. Right. Uh, and then from that stage, if that does occur, then we can apply for various orders to enforce the debt, mm. uh, which may take the form of uh, an attachment order or a freezing order against their property if they have if they have any. Mm. Um, that's quite a common occurrence for us, I think. Uh, we've come across that a few times. Uh, but in terms of overall advice, uh, Adam, what do you think are kind of the key takeaways for directors? Mm. Because I think that's probably who this uh, applies to the most. What do you think are the key takeaways in terms well, of uh, this section and how it applies to their spending? Well, the, the, the key takeaways that I would, I would say are you know, of importance are make sure that the you know, money that you spend or take out of the business is properly authorised. So pursuant to section 161, filling out those requirements, taking good legal and accounting advice to make sure that you have that paper trail. So if a liquidator does come knocking, you can hand over the, uh, the resolutions that state that, that the, um, you know, the money was fair and reasonably paid. And it's also looking at that fairness element, so that the that you know it's not excessive and it's not over the odds in terms mm. of you know what what kind of efforts are being put into the business. So there is a kind of two stage approach. You have to look at you know filling out the paperwork, but also assessing the reasonability of of that remuneration has to be you know has to fit the circumstances. Mm. So if if directors take advice and they and they, they they comply with those, they'll be in a much better position to to be protected than if they hadn't. So it's really about. You know, filling out those requirements, taking good advice, and, and sticking with it, and then hopefully, when a liquidator, um, you know, might be appointed, then they have that paper trail to, to you know, defend themselves with. <coughs> and we're 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 giving advice here, or we give, we're not giving advice, but we're giving information that obviously wouldn't um, it wouldn't help us as liquidators, but we think it's important that that people are aware of these requirements and can you know fulfil those obligations where where possible. Um, e even though it might, you know, down the track, not help us in terms of recovering this money, as as long as people are complying, then it should offer better protection than if they're not. Yes. Yeah. Also, another way to mitigate the chances of um, being asked to pay your overdrawn current account down is to keep your personal expenditure independent from your business expenditure and. A way you could do that would just be taking cash drawings from your business instead of mm. paying for restaurant meals and pers other personal expenditure because if it comes down to a liquidator investigating your current affairs and your bank statements, it's up to their discretion mm. whether a transaction is a b personal or a business e expense. And, and I think that's important, I mean, you know, having a separation of personal and business because we've had certain cases, we've had things like online dating you know, profiles and on, online dating um, apps that are being paid for. So if you, if you want to keep those things private and you don't want you know, a liquid going over your personal expenses, having a separate personal account and like William says, taking drawings um, will also help that. It will also help you to keep, to keep track and manage your, um, your personal expenses so that they're not actually um, increasing, you know, uh, you know, with, without you knowing about it. If you if you take a set amount of drawings, you can you know you can yeah. you can measure that and you know how much it is. Whereas if you're if you're paying exactly. for everything, much easier. If you're to paying for everything, you know, personally, it can it can add up and you don't even realise. Yes. So keep it keeping it um, you know tight is probably also another. Not treating thing. your business accounts like a credit card. Correct. Exactly. Yeah.
All right, well, that is the sort of wrap up for current accounts and, and what you can or can't, can't do in terms of mitigating those risks. Um, thanks for watching and if you have any questions about um, insolvency or any other questions about current accounts or if you may um, you know, have any exposure, let us know and we'll, we're happy to have a chat and see um, if we can help in terms of anything. But otherwise, thanks for watching and yeah, see you next time. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks.